Being a DJ, I suppose perhaps a bit like being an actress maybe, there is no set path and a lot of it is down to luck. It's not a given. You can't just wake up and say, I'm, I'm going to be a radio presenter. It just might not happen. I actually did hospital radio before I went to university. So when I was about 16, I used to go to a very glamorous porter cabin. It was in Chester, actually. I grew up there for a while at the Countess of Chester Hospital. I used to drive to this porter cabin and, and do a radio show and torture everyone's ears for a couple of hours every Sunday morning. I knew I liked it and I knew I was quite confident doing it and I wanted to do it for a career. So my parents said, that's fine, but please get a degree as well. So I, to satisfy them, I did a history degree. When I even applied for universities back in those days, they didn't have many radio stations across universities. I think a lot of colleges now and universities do, but back then it wasn't rife actually. I picked Hull University because it was one of the universities that had a student radio station. I was supposed to spend my spare time in the library, but I spent my spare time at the local radio station and at the student radio station. Women were, were rare in radio, um, and this is like early 90s, and, and women were very rare in radio, and certainly behind the scenes, um, there was a lot of engineers who were predominantly men at this point. So when I went to help out at the, the student radio station, I was pretty much the only woman there. Um, then they had elections for being the station manager, and I, I won it actually, and people voted for me to, to run it, which was brilliant. Um, might have put a few noses out of joints, these engineers thinking, well, what the... Um, but I thought, well, I got those organisation skills. I don't, yes, I don't know about how to put a radio station on air, but other people can do that. I, we can all, you know, I, I was in charge of programming and who was going to be on what show, so I absolutely loved doing that. I would love to think that I'd inspired anyone to go into radio, that, that, that would be absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, it was quite rare for women to be in radio in the 90s. I think I was sort of lucky, actually, in that because there weren't many women in radio, you, you're going to get noticed if you send out a demo tape that those days, you know, it was before the internet was even invented, my God. And I would physically put a tape in the post and send it to a radio station, and if you were female, you might get looked at, but what I did feel like was that um, being female, I thought I, I'm not going to get a job just being a dolly bird and giggling. That's not, I don't want to be that person on the radio. So I'm going to beat the guys at their own game. I'm going to be as good as them um, and work as hard as them and show that this is, this is my act is the same, if not better you know, at the time, you know, as them. But I, I didn't want to do it on the, oh, let's just giggle and make stupid yeah. jokes. I didn't want to let the side down, I think. If someone asks you to do something um, and you think, I'm not enough, I can't do this. What if what I've got to offer isn't enough? You've got to think they wouldn't have asked you to do it if they didn't think you could do it. Um, so, so, so say yes, and then think about how you're going to achieve that. I know Louise Vicaria here from the college, and she asked me um, if I would talk at the graduation address. I remember coming off the tube and, and seeing the text, and she said, um, listen, it would be really amazing if you, if you could give the graduation address, or be one of the people that gives the graduation address. And I just thought, I can't do that. I can't do that. And then I just thought, actually, you can. You can do that. Say, say, so I said yes, and actually I really enjoyed thinking about what I was going to say, and I, and I looked forward to the day, so that was great. And, and actually I enjoyed being back in a, in, a, in a student environment. I really liked meeting students, and I liked meeting people who were so passionate about careers that they were going into, and people at, at this point in their life, whether they're actually, some of them are mature students, some of them, you know, in their teens, early 20s, and I really enjoyed being in that environment, because I don't get that from, from my day job. I'm really excited to be a patron of the HE Association because I think the plans sound very exciting and it's a great initiative because I think it gives students confidence that the skills that they're learning and the time that they are spending and all the energy put into it and the sacrifices they're making, working hard financially, it's not always easy to study, that, that there is some kind of um, matching up with industry 
and there's a light at the end of the tunnel and there's a real vision of where this could take you and, and people that, that can help you because it's you could really feel that um, you know are you on your own out there and certainly once you've graduated you know to, to, to be able to make contacts along the way to be able to gain experience along the way is absolutely invaluable. Probably the most important is is don't give up. Um, just just keep going, because you will get there. Um, because if you're passionate about it, and there's nothing else that you want to do, then then you will do it. Network. It's. I don't know that I ever did this well enough. Actually, I think it's because you. I know nobody wants to network and be a slimy networker, but just know people and also tell people what you want to do. I was always also a little bit guilty of not telling people because maybe you're embarrassed. Maybe you think that if you say, you know, you want to be, you know, head chef at Buckingham Palace or something like that, you want to be in charge of the royal kitchens, someone might laugh at you. Say it, do it and say, this is what I want to do. And the more people you tell what you want to do, the more likely that is to happen. Do say yes to things. Say yes to things that make you a little bit scared, not necessarily uncomfortable, but just that make you scared because maybe you think you're not enough, but trust me, you are enough. Um, but equally, also learn when to say no. And it's okay to say no. And it's okay to say no because you think someone's taking advantage of your time. You think someone is just asking too much and really, you know, you're not getting paid anything for it, which I know as a student you might not be, but there may be, um, you know, situations where actually it's time to say, well, no, I don't need to do that. So it's trying to learn when to say yes, when to say no.